I was a patient before I was a doctor. I've been to a lot of doctors, been on a lot of issues with my health. I graduated from chiropractic school and I also graduated with a nutrition degree. So I like to apply in my office chiropractic and nutrition. You know, I'm a big strong believer and I'm here to kind of guide the patients and give them my experiences. There's more connection with your health and nutrition. Okay, I guess we're ready to get started. Thanks for coming out. Um, we're going to be talking about autoimmune diseases. Um, I put this slide up here. I have a new business name and a new business logo. So it's called Spine Plus Chiropractic. I kind of picked it because uh, of the spine uh, being a chiropractor and then the leaf over the spine because we do a lot of alternative medicine, integrative medicine and uh, complementary medicine. Uh, obviously not drugs, but supplementation, nutraceuticals, herbals. And uh, uh, I've been doing this probably for about 19 years now. Um, new web page. Uh, anybody ref wants to refer anybody to schedule an appointment or do anything, if you go up to my patients up there, um, they got some uh, testimonials that you can listen to. And there's also, uh, under services, there's, there's forms for uh, a history um, and all your information. So you're not sitting in an office filling it out. So if you got an appointment at 9.30, you'll probably get it at 9.45, but instead of 10.15, because you're not sitting there for a half hour filling out paperwork. So it just makes it easier on, on the patient. And I, I've been in the, uh, you know, I've been in a lot of doctor's offices as a kid, because I was a sick kid. My mom could vouch for me because she paid all my bills. Um, but it's just easier having everything and walking in the door and everything smoother. So that's the web page. And then this is obviously the office. And, uh, what's this thing? and, then, the, uh, and then that's the a web page address. Um, I, always, uh, I always recommend if, if you know, Take a caution approach to health. Just make sure you're getting everything you need. Um, you don't have to have a disease process. You don't have to be going through something. Um, this is about improving the quality of our life and uh, uh, about staying out of the hospital or staying out of the old folks home when you get older. This is about looking ahead 10 to 15 years instead of wandering through life and, and, and just thinking day to day. So. This is a, this is a long-term perspective. So I put this uh, program together um, and it's, it's basically got about, uh, uh, it's only four products, but 15 different foods. It's, it's got minerals, your oils, and then Boswellia Complex uh, uh, helps with uh, osteoarthritis. A lot of people have osteoarthritis out there. Uh, joint degeneration has been up 700% in the last 15 years. So we got to do something from a chemical standpoint to, to be uh, stopping this because more exercise isn't always better. They act like, well, you got to exercise it. Well, you know, I, I do triathlons and I run and I do this and I do that and I still have the condition. <laughs> so it, there's something deeper and there's a deeper root to it and it's all biochemistry. Um, this is a typical... Uh, I usually get a lot of patients, they're the last ones that come in, they got all their blood work, they got all their files. Um, but when you do run out of money, what are you gonna do? <laughs> Literally. So you gotta take care of your health, you gotta pick the doctors that you choose to go to that, that, that show knowledge, expertise, have good ratings like my webpage does. <laughs> So I do these lectures because you're not going to get this stuff anywhere else. You're not going to get the science. You're not going to get the research. Um, nobody's going to tell you this. Everything's an infomercial and just take this. I'm going to tell you why you're taking it, what pathway and mechanism it's fulfilling. So everything's broken down. It's open and, and, and anything's up for debate, but this isn't really debatable. That's what the research says. This is what our taxpayer dollars paid for, and I'm just bringing it to the forefront so that you could take advantage of it for your health. Uh, Charlie Soap, 
probably one of the, you're like, well, why is a chiropractor selling soap? Well, it's because we, we, we carry around our clothes every day. It's not only what we put on our bodies, but it's what we put on our bodies. And Charlie's soap is probably one of the best products for uh, mildew. People don't realize how many chemicals are trapped within your uh, clothing and then it creates a barrier and you're actually trapping moisture and then you're like, why does my shirt stink or why does it smell? A lot of it's mildew uh, and that's the, that's the mechanism. Plus they use this product a lot out in Ann Arbor for uh, cloth diapers, baby's diapers. They wanted to find out what was non-chemical, uh, what actually cleaned the diaper, got all the residues out and, and worked the best and, and didn't create uh, you know, uh, uh, eczema or, or baby rash or anything like that. So that's a product uh, that 99% uh, biodegradable and it's, it's all natural and uh, it, it, works, uh, it works fabulous. There's nothing really comparable to it. Uh, influenza, say no to the flu shot. Basically, you know, and I took this out of, this isn't just me saying it so that you take something. This is me, this is actually virology, microbiology from Lancaster telling you death from influenza infection is very rare and appears to be determined by host factors rather than the virulence of the virus. That's just the opposite of what they tell you on the media or you walk into CVS or Walgreens these days and they're like, you know, get your flu shot. You can hear it in the background over the speakers. So uh, this, I've been using this protocol probably for about 12 years, but this raises natural killer cells, which a third of the population has a defect in. That's why they're doing vaccines in the first place. And then bio D emulsion, if you can keep your, your vitamin D levels up, uh, especially in Michigan with 265 days of overcast, um, that will uh, help you fight the, the flu. So a lot of times if you take the right dose, you, you can treat the flu. So, and then liquid iodine sterilizes the nasal, nasal cavities, um, you know, usually colonizes it in the throat and then goes to the lungs. So that kind of sterilizes everything. It's, sta it's safe, it's easy, and uh, you can use it on airplanes, you know, anywhere where you go in, into a, a, a social area with a lot of people. Okay, I wanna, uh, I wanna introduce somebody. Um, uh, she's been doing, uh, <clears throat> um, she's been doing essential oils for about, I would say about 12 years. Um, it's a new service in my office and um, it's an integral part of the puzzle for your health, especially with the weather changes in Michigan, you know, us going through four seasons. Um, a lot of people don't experience in that and we all know we experience it because you know, we're in and out of, you know, colds and coughs and all that. But I wanted Tamara to come up and talk about uh, uh, essential oils and, uh, and her company that she represents and that I'm going to be using out of my office. Come on up, Tamara. Essential oils. 
Um, essential oils became part of my life, like you said, 10 or 12 years ago. I had already been seeking alternatives to take care of my family. I wasn't feeling good about giving them some of the over-the-counter over -the -counter stuff that I was, and so I was looking. A friend gave me some peppermint oil, and since then I've never looked back. Um, essential oils are a part of my, um, I use them every day. They're part of what I do. Um, I drink them in my water. Um, I use them for um, energy for mood, and so forth. So what are essential oils? That's what I'm here to talk to you about. They're the most powerful part of the plant, often referred to as the lifeblood of the plant. Just like your blood clot, um, clots your cuts, oxygenates your cells, and detoxes the body, oils do the same thing with the plants. Essential oils are distilled from shrubs, flowers, trees, roots, bushes, fruit, rinds, resin, and herbs. Oils consist of over um, 100 different natural organic for example, scientists have found that a banana has 17 different naturally occurring chemicals. Uh, they have 17 natural um, occurring chemicals, and those are the parts of the plant that enact change. Um, they are the movers and the shakers in the plant. They photosynthesize, they energize, and they work through trauma. And they can do similar things in the human body. In humans, oils can provide support for every system in the body, your muscular system, circulatory system, um, respiratory system, skeletal hormones. They support brain health and a healthy weight. They can uh, support your entire respiratory system and aid your immune system when you're around disease. Oils can support every organ in the body, your liver, kidneys, colon, and heart, and they are extensive for mood support. An oil in a diffuser can soothe a child's rough day at school or provide a calming effect when you've had a stressful day at work. We all have those, right? <laughs> uh, oils are used for, as an alternative to toxic cleaning, like Dr. Perry was talking about. Um, you can literally start swapping out um, every single chemical in your home, uh, which I have done. I replaced my 409, my Windex, my Pine Soul, and other um, products to live a pure lifestyle. There are about 300 oils on Earth, but you really only need 10 to 20. Um, 10 to 20 of them to build a good kit for yourself at home. And um, at this point, I was going to tell you that over here, well, I'm going to talk about two oils tonight. Is, um, and uh, I'm going to set those apart, but they're part of the kit. And it's part of this kit that you see here, and it's on the table. So if you want afterwards, you can take, take a look at that. Um, there are three main ways to get oils into your system. The English apply it topically. Um, they rub it in the, on the skin. The French ingest and cook with it and the Germans diffuse and inhale it, which is the most effective method because it does not have to go through the digestive system. So how do they enter and how long do they last? Tests have shown that um, oils can reach the heart. Oils can reach the heart, liver, and kidneys um, and thyroid in three seconds when inhaled. They were found in the bloodstream in 26 seconds when applied topically. Expulsion of essential oils takes three to six hours in a healthy body in a, um, and up to 14 if you're unwell. Your body will actually hold on to the oil a little bit longer if it knows that it needs it. Do oils work? The answer is yes, but not all essential oils are created equal. You have probably noticed that you can pick them up just about anywhere. I'm sure you guys have um, heard of oils or seen them in Walmart, uh, bought food stores, farmers markets. Um, so in the United States, there is no rating system for essential oils. The closest we get is the FDA requirement, uh, which states that in order to label a bottle of essential oil pure or therapeutic grade or organic, the contents of the bottle must contain at least 5% essential oil. So that means 95% can be carriers, chemical extenders, solvents, basically garbage. And that is totally legal under US law. You have to go with integrity, the company that you are working with. When you get a Young Living oil, you are getting pure essential oil. There is nothing else in there, no chemicals. It comes right from the farm straight to you. The science behind essential oils and why they work. Frequency. The frequencies of an essential oil of essential oils is between 52 and 320 megahertz. 
the highest of all known substances on the planet. Fresh herbs measure, measure 20 to 27, dry herbs 12 to 22, and fresh pr produce 5 to 10. Processed or canned food measures zero. They contain chemical nutrition, but not the, elect uh, the electric nutrition of live fresh foods. Chemically, there are three main components to essential oils that cause them to have an effect on the human body. Chemically, each oil has a hundred different natural occurring uh, chemical compounds. Of those, measure, of those, some measure very high in phenols and phenol propanoids. Each of these uh, body cell, each of your body's cells have receptor sites that allow them to receive new information. The second, um, the second component is sesquinterpenes. Sesquinterpenes have the ability to eradicate bad information and purge it from your cells. The third component is monoterpenes, which reset your cells back to the factory settings. Essential oil history. They aren't all that new. They, have been, they were first mentioned in the Bible in Genesis chapter 37 when the slave traders um, took Joseph and carried spices, balm, and myrrh. Joseph's father was anointed with myrrh for burial in Genesis. Oils are mentioned 1,100 times directly or indirectly in Scripture. Some of the oldest cultures used essential oils. It was only after World War II um, when essential oils were rediscovered, and the science on their uses are growing every, every single year. Because of their size molecularly, they are smaller than cells, and they um, they are actually smaller than viruses as well. Um, oils can penetrate your, your skin more swiftly than any modern medicine, medicine on the planet. According to a study by MD John Volney, essential oils can affect every cell in the body within 20 minutes, and then they are metabolized like other nutrients. All oils in the world fall into four different categories, grade A, grade B, grade C, and grade D. Grade A is a therapeutic grade, which is medicinal grade, um, which is made from organically grown um, plants and distilled at very low temperatures. That is what you get with um, Young Living's essential oils. Um, just the distillation process is the key. Um, so let me just talk to you a minute about the cypress oil. Um, when you distill cypress at the perfect temperature, it has 288 natural occurring chemical compounds that enact change in the human body. If you warm that temperature up 10 degrees too warm or 10 degrees too cold, um, it will only have 11. So it's important that it is distilled at the right temperature. That is where most oil companies make their biggest mistake. Grade B is food grade. They can contain synthetics, pesticides, fertilizers, chemical extenders, and carrier oils. Grade C is basically for perfume. Um, that's what's in a lot of the oils that you see at the at the uh, grocery store and um, different markets around. Grade D is basically floral water, which is aromatic only, and it's a byproduct of the grade A distillation. So grade A is the only true pure oil. Um, grade D would be like walking to your refrigerator, taking a glass of orange juice, and diluting it 95% before you drink it. It wouldn't have the full benefits of orange juice. That's why you that's why you want grade A oils. So you want to know the company that you're that you're dealing with. Young Living is the world leader in essential oils and has set the standard for purity. Um, um, this is because they guarantee purity through the seed to seal process. It's a process of integrity. Gary Young has said that he never makes an oil for a profit, he makes it for a purpose. Young Living believes you deserve the best products that are genuine, free of synthetic chemicals, and are unmatched in purity. Sea to Seal is both a promise to you and a reflection of the global stewardship. Sea to Seal means each plant is hand weeded, there are no pesticides used, no chemicals, and no weed killers. The plants are harvested at their peak, and then they're put through vigorous testing um, before distillation. Then they go from the farm directly to you. So seed to seal is not just a slogan, it's a promise. Why do oil, com oil companies sell cheaper? Well, like I mentioned as I was talking about the different grades, it's because they add things to their oils. The oils are basically um, either uh, the grade B or below. <clears throat> so it wouldn't make a whole lot of sense to try to switch to getting chemicals out of your life to then use chemicals. So how are they made? It takes a great deal of work to produce a tiny amount of essential oil. 
It takes um, 60,000 rose blossoms, provide, they only, only provides one ounce of rose oil. A lavender is abundant, 220 pounds would provide seven pounds of oil. Jasmine flowers must be picked by hand before the sun becomes hot on the very first day that we open, making it one of the most expensive oils in the world. It takes eight million hand-picked blossoms to produce 2.2 pounds of oil. Sandalwood, sandalwood tree must be 30 years old and 30 feet high before it can be cut down for distillation. Our oil is safe. There are certain oils that are photosensitive, uh, meaning you don't want to put them on and go outside. These are mostly your citrus oils, like uh, grapefruit, lemon, and bergamot. When using oils on your skin, you always want to watch for redness and dilute with the carrier oil. Um, you dilute, on, dilute oils on children because their skin is more permeable and absorbs the oils more quickly. The feet are my favorite place to put oils on children and on adults. Um, there are two types of oils on the earth. There are fatty oils, and there are essential oils. Fatty oils are carrier oils, like olive oil, coconut oil, which have much larger molecules um, than those of essential oils. So using a carrier oil with your essential oil <clears throat> slows down the rate the body can absorb the essential oil because it has to ping pong through the larger molecules of carrier oil to get into your skin. Be wary of putting oils near your eyes. Some oils like peppermint do not feel good in your eye, and they can cause a, a burning sensation. Um, you can become desensitized to an oil, so you don't want to put it in the same spot every day. You want to rotate. Uh, what about the internal use of essential oils? Uh, Naha, one of the top aromatherapy schools in the United States, does not advocate um, essential oils for internal use. Why? Most companies are not safe for internal use. They don't carry the, any gross, or which is called, which is generally regarded as safe essential oils, which have been cleared by the FDA. Uh, Naha also bases um, most of their decisions on the British model, which advocates topical use only. Many of the British studies are flawed because the example, um, for example, the studies are done in extremely high doses or in ways that oils are not likely used, like pouring a whole bottle inside the body. Uh, Young Living utilizes all three method methods, British, French, and German. The French have been safely using essential oils internally for decades. Young Living has created a Vitality line, which comes in the kit. Um, with distinct labels. You'll see that they are the white labels, so you can recognize which ones that are safe for internal use. Tonight, um, I'm going to just spotlight a couple oils out of the kit, like I mentioned, and Rachel's going to pass them around. Uh, the first one is Thieves. Um, Thieves has uh, cinnamon, clove, eucalyptus, lemon, and rosemary in it. Um, so you guys can pass that around and, uh, and smell that. That comes in a Vitality and a regular uh, one as well. That is great. It actually is in the diffuser over there that you may have smelled when you walked in. Um, and then the other one is Stress Away. I use that for um, end of the day when it's not. They already did. Oh, so you guys already got to smell. All right. Well, that is it. Thank you so much for letting me share with you. I will be here after if anyone has questions. There are some handouts there at the table if you'd like. Um, Thank you. Thanks, Tamara. Okay, so we got over to flu. Um, you know, cholesterol, you know, the bottom line is with uh, these cholesterol nutrients, you're, you're, you're uh, you know, you can lower cholesterol with these, but your whole objective is to get cholesterol so that you keep it in solution so that it doesn't become oxidized. Oxidized cholesterol, you could have cholesterol all, all the way up to 900. But if it doesn't go out of solution and it's not oxidized, it doesn't, it's not going to cause disease, it's not going to cause plaque. So that's what you're really trying to focus on. These are the things that keep cholesterol from non-oxidizing and keep it uh, uh, keep being carried and not uh, spilled out in the body. Oxidized cholesterol is mostly found in your powdered milks, um, in a lot of your, you know, bagged, packaged, canned, all that stuff. So um, that's the mechanism we're working uh, with here. <clears throat> um, I don't think the information is good enough out there. Um, 
I, this came out of the Mayo Clinic. 88% of people go for a second opinion after seeing a doctor wind up receiving a new diagnosis. Okay? That's very important. Um, I want to stress, because I'm not trying to replace medicine. Medicine has its, its good window, small window of opportunity for emergency situations. But what are you going to do after that? You can't stay in, in the emergency situation and stay on these medications for long periods of time without having side effects and it affecting you in the long run. So basically, my objective is to uh, use phytonutrients, uh, non-conflicting studies, uh, use, talk about toxicity of drug medications. We all know that drugs are synthetic. You know, they're metabolized differently. They have to cheat the body to get them into the body. So when you just understand that, that's the word where uh, synthetic comes in. Uh, there's a lot of safety in herbal phytotherapies and synergism is probably one of the most important words that you can understand. I'll show you the, the, the proof of that and why, because it targets multifactorial pathways in the body. Um, you know, we got safety, common sense. This was published in 2017, April 24, 2017. This was a clinic in the Congo um, where medications were used for malaria, okay? And there's three, types, there's three types or forms of malaria, but this in particular clinic had 18 people that were in critical condition with one child that was actually in a coma, okay? That was after all the anti-malaria medications, okay? Those are your pharmaceutical medications. Well, what they did was, after this happened, they found that if they just used artesian annu plant, after five days of just using the whole plant, they had full recovery and the, per, and the child that was in a coma came out of the coma. So there was also another study that was done. So that synergism of not just picking one active quarterback on a football team and saying, this is the guy that's doing it. Yeah, he's important, but it's the synergism of the team that's the most important, that's critical. That's why I don't use a lot of single synthetic things because you're better off, there's more power in, in, in the in the whole than the sum of its parts. So here's the, uh, here's the whole article in case nobody believes me because people are like, well, you know, you're just saying that. No, this is the article. It was up here. Detailed cases are documented in the Artesmia annu dry leaf tablets to treat malaria resistant to ACT and IVs. They had these people on a slew of things. Um, this was a good uh, saying right here. It said, these 18 patients were dying, Weather said. So to, to see 100% recovery, even the child who had elapsed into a coma was just amazing. It was a small study, but the results are powerful. So you're not, gonna, you're not gonna see this study anywhere else. This is just, you know, there's a system out there, you know, and, and but God forbid if somebody gets their kid that has a coma and has this condition, you know, you're not going to be following their way that they want to do it because they've already done it. it. It failed. So I just want to make you aware of that. And it was a simple herbal. Herbs are crude drugs. And most people don't understand that. All right, let's go over autoimmune. Um, Basically, it's just an immune response. You get a sequence of events uh, that lead to the immune system to turn against itself. Uh, we're going to talk about that. Basically, it's involved with um, a bunch of chemicals, prostaglandins, autoantibodies, defective T cells. It, it, there, there's so many things that could be affected in the body. It, it, it gets very complicated. I'm going to focus on two specific pathways that when somebody says, Oh, I'm taking something for inflammation. Well, what does that mean? There's, there's all kinds of inflammatory pathways in the body and different pathways um, express 
uh, whether they're overfunction or underfunction, different diseases. So I'm going to be specific and talk about two specific pathways that I found in the research that people can benefit with various diseases, especially with these two inflammatory markers. Um, according to the American Autoimmune uh, Society, there's 23.5 million. Uh, that's just basically with, with um, um, there was 24 diseases. Right now, there's over 100 autoimmune diseases. We're only like treating like five to nine of them. Okay? So when you start looking at the costs of this, it shows uh, National Institute of Health estimates cost to be a range of 100 billion in comparison to cancer costs, which is 57 billion, and a heart attack, which is 200 billion. So inflammation is huge, but your target is even more critical of how, what you're using and how you're going to get that, achieve those results. Um, here's the 80 to 100. Co close genetic relationship existed among autoimmune diseases, explaining clusters in individuals and families as well as common pathway. They found that 10% of autoimmune people is genetic. The other 90% is, is, uh, is environmental. So it's acquired. You're not born with it, it's acquired. Commonly used immunosuppressant treatments lead to devastating long-term side effects. Uh, it's 100 billion, there's 100 plus known autoimmune diseases. The main ones that are treated are Crohn's, ulcerative colitis, systemic SLE, systemic lupus erythematosus, multiple sclerosis, rheumatoid, psoriasis, and scleroderma. That makes up the, uh, the, the big profit of, their, of the cost of their market. Um, autoimmune disease can f affect any part of your body at any time. It doesn't mean that the, uh, it, doesn't, it doesn't mean just because it's in the skin, it might not be different than the thyroid. It might be the same mechanism, it's just that that tissue was the one that got affected. So lungs, nerves, GI tract, some of the symptoms of autoimmune disease, which, like this says, everything's normal. You are the picture of health. Your labs don't show anything. La uh, autoimmune is progressive. It usually starts uh, with fatigued, weakened adrenal glands. Then it affects the lymph system. And as soon as it affects the lymph system, then it starts affecting the immune system. And then that's when the lab work starts showing up. So you're actually behind the ball by the time you get to the uh, immune system lab work. It's kind of like being on the, you know, going into your doctor, all your lab work's normal, but, you know, uh, it might be low normal or high normal, but if, if you're not ready to, you know, be, you know, flown into the hospital, nothing's going to really show. Those are extreme numbers. We're looking at uh, clinical and subclinical numbers for this stuff. But you always want to look at the symptoms to see uh, fatigue, infertility, inflammation, possibly in the joints, irritability. Who isn't irritable out there? <laughs> Doesn't mean you have an autoimmune disease. Dizziness, uh, digestive. Drugs are one, whenever somebody comes in and I, everybody asks, well, how did I get this? Where did this come from? You know, how, you know, you know, why me? You know, the first thing I ask is, are you on any medications? Because drugs are the biggest cause of autoimmune disease. They cause, uh, 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 DIL uh, is, is uh, uh, basically lupus induced drugs from drugs. So all these medications, there's monocycline, antibiotics. Antibiotics are big ones. Here's some, of the, here's some of the problems that patients with chronic conditions, what they made in 2000, or the increase in the prices went from 
231% all the way down to 9.5%. 9.5 to 231, the percentage on all these drugs is going up. I mean, they're huge. These are expensive drugs. I mean, if you have MS, it'll cost you anywhere from two to $3,000 just for a, a TNF inhibitor. That's what it, basically what it is. So this is gonna be, the, 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 this is gonna be the moneymaker for medicine, basically. And you'll find out why through this. Percentage of total specialty costs. Look at the inflammatory conditions over there, 27.8. There's multiple sclerosis, there's cancer. So inflammatory conditions are huge. Here's the per member, per year cost, inflammatory. So that's the highest. So inflammation is big, but it's too general. Some people ask, you know, how do I get this stuff? I always try to find reasons why. You always, as a doctor, you always want to, you know, challenge yourself. You're, it's challenging enough to take care of patients. It is. Because, you, they, they, you know, you're, you're, you, know, you want to give them the right answers and you want to do the right thing. That's what it's about. This was diet, eat food, if a fly lands on it, as they carry more dangerous bacteria than previously thought. This was just put out a couple days ago. I, threw, I picked it up uh, in, in Penn State. They said common house fly carries salmonella, E. coli, even bacteria, which leads to stomach ulcers and deadly sepsis. So that's very important. They usually carry it on their legs when they land. So they land on your sandwich, you know, they're landing on their legs. That's how they're carried. Um, but I thought it was an interesting article. It's, you know, it's stuff that you don't you know, pick up and read all the time, but it gave you a good reason not to eat the potato salad you know, on, a, on, a, on a picnic. Far away, urban. Um, but people are like, well, how did I get an ulcer? Yeah, bacteria is related to ulcer, the H. pylori, but it could have been from a fly. It could have been from you know, stress. So there's a lot of ways for this to be created. And I just wanted to use that as an example because that's a very common one. Um, celiac and autoimmune thyroid connection. If you have a thyroid problem, if you have Hashimoto's or Graves, um, you have to do your best job to get the wheat out of your diet. It's that simple. The same protein that uh, wheat uh, makes up is the same configuration of your thyroid. There's a molecular mimicry that cross reacts and your immune system ends up attacking your thyroid when it thinks it's a piece of wheat. So there's a cross reactivity that's going on because of the molecularity of the same structure of the gluten and gliadin and the thyroid tissue. So that's what that's about. But researchers found Organ-specific autoantibodies took about three, three to six months of gluten-free diet. I'm not recommending that for everybody, but if you've got autoimmune diseases, this is a no-brainer uh, as far as, you know, get the wheat out of your diet, basically. Uh, this is one of the tests I perform. It's a LISA test. Uh, it's a blood test. Um, it checks 96 different foods. Uh, whenever you have an autoimmune, and I'm going to go into it, a little bit, but 96 different foods with these different things, it can really give you an indication of what foods are, are causing. It's, it's, not going to be an, it's not going to be an allergy. It's going to be an intolerance. And it, it, it involves a different layer of your immune system, your joints, your blood. It's not going to be anaphylactic. We're going to, it's, going to, it's going to affect your throat. It's going to cause wheels or hives. It just doesn't do that. The, IgG antibody panel usually tells you how you react usually 48 to 72 hours later when you don't even figure it out because you're, it's already done and gone, but it's a delayed reaction. So that's what you're looking for. We're not looking for anaphylactic stuff here, okay? We're looking for delayed hypersensitivities, uh, you know, fogginess, my joints bother me. Here's an example of, of, of a big one, nightshade vegetables that a lot of people uh, don't realize that, that cause uh, um, 
that cause the joints to be inflammatory? It's the lectins, right under joint pain, it's the lectins found in the nightshades that might be responsible for causing gut irritation and joint symptoms. I know I'm sensitive to eggplant. If I eat eggplant, probably within an hour, my, my feet will get stiff. I never even picked that up. My, my Albanian neighbor made me some uh, eggplant. He brought it over. I was, I was eating it the next day. And I was, uh, I was eating eggplant. God, my feet are killing me. I'm like, what is that? I was just sitting at the computer. I'm like, what, is, you know, what the heck's going on? I, I was like surprised. And the only thing I touched an hour before that was that eggplant. I, I picked it right off. Tomatoes are everywhere. Um, but these are some of the, the changes or substitutes that you can use. Here's a, here's a person that actually, I just don't feel good. I shop at the health food store often. I mean, this is, this is a disaster. Uh, what do you think you want to do with the dairy uh, area? You probably want to avoid that. Because dairy, remember dairy, uh, dairy makes you stiff. It's got the anti-stiffness factor. They, pa they pasteurize it. So it's not like it used to be. Uh, eggs are a big one. Eggs are a big one. There's sesame, beans. But this is a person that just, I, you know, I just want to be healthy. And they don't even realize it. And I'm eating almonds and almond butter and almond milk and soy. And I mean, what else is at the health food store? I mean, that's a lot of the, the foods that are there. Here's the other one, uh, hip joint dysfunction, the anti-stiffness factor. Everybody's just, God, my hip keeps on bothering me. It keeps on irritating me. It's not, I'm not getting over it. You got to watch the dairy family. Dairy family will show. Sugar, dairy. There's bananas. And then, and then if asparagus and garlic, if you look at those, you can kind of think backwards. Those are both your sulfur uh, foods. So your sulfation or one of your detoxification pathways weak through the liver. So you might want to support that so you can have those things. If you support that and potentially fix that, you don't have to worry about it. But I don't know anybody that's going to eat asparagus every day, every night anyway. You like asparagus? Yeah. <sighs> um, I hear it all the time. When, I, when, when, you, when you hear autoimmune disease, they, I hear... Leaky gut, leaky gut. <laughs> you know, everybody's there, oh, you got a leaky gut. You got a leaky gut. Everybody's got a leaky gut. Uh, there's nothing wrong with that, but a lot of our foods, infections, and self made remember, digestion starts up here. It does not start down here. It's not, not that it, leaky gut isn't contributing to it, but it's not the main thing, okay? Here's some cross reactivities. Like if you find out, hey, um, uh, I'm, I'm bad in the cow uh, or, or, or casein area, you might want to avoid sheep, lamb, goat, and buffalo because they all cross react. Because you don't, you don't have to be on a farm. It could be on your plate. You could be eating it and you get the same reaction as if you're on the farm. That's what that means. So you can take these things, you can look at them backwards, forwards, and it tells you where you're at with your immune system. Uh, here's the, uh, the cockroach, which is basically, you know, cockroach poop, feces. But the mite, the crab, and the shrimp all, crea uh, all cre uh, cross react. So if you're sensitive to that, then you might want, not want to eat those things. So that's just an, uh, an example. Uh, heavy metals, uh, this is an example of arsenic. I like to test the five heavy metals. Um, heavy metals are, are big as far as the immune system because once they go in there, you can't get them out. That's why they call them heavy metals. You can't retrieve them out of the system as easily as you think you can. You actually have to go and be specific and pick them up and carry them out. I've looked through, I don't know, uh, probably hundreds of hair analyses and, and, and it's very hard to change a hair analysis if you're not doing the right thing. That's why I'm here is because I've seen hair analyses that are bad 
and it's it's hard getting that stuff out of the system. So I've used things that, you know, you can you can use, but arsenic is important because arsenic tells you not that you know uh, you're hanging out at the lumber factory because arsenic is found in lumber, but it's telling you that molds, fungal, mildews, residues, all that stuff raises arsenic level. It's a byproduct of fungal and, and, and mold. So candida. So this just tells me that I need to be looking at molds, mildews, fungal, yeast, candida. Cadmium lead. Here's another one. Um, also aluminum. You're looking at uh, arsenic. But we're, believe it or not, we're exposed to all this stuff. I mean, we're exposed to aluminum. I mean, all your, uh, your chemtrail stuff is all aluminum. People don't believe in that stuff, but they're trying to reflect the sun off the earth to change the, uh, the temperature. The earth is deteriorating. Did you know that? It's degrading. And they're trying to slow that process down. I don't agree with the way they're doing it, but... I'm a big biblical guy, and I believe that the earth is waxing old. <laughs> so, here's some of the specific blood work when you're actually in the disease uh, process. You can check different antibodies for different diseases. Um, uh, pretty easy to do, pretty expensive, very expensive. Most people come to me and they already have this stuff because they've been to every doctor. Um, um, if you're fasting, a simple fast, you're regenerating and reversing immunosuppression. So if you can implement some type of easy fast, and I like easy, everybody likes easy, right? <laughs> I like easy too. The best and easiest way to fast is this Dr. Mosley, uh, the fast diet. It's basically a 4-3 intermittent fasting diet. And what you're doing is three days out of the week, I'll pick day seven there, which is Sunday, I'll add it. Because the five, I got a 5-2 up here, but the 5-2 is for insulin resistance and for weight loss. But when people have autoimmune diseases, we need to get the, the antibodies down. Well, the antibodies need to come up, but the autoantibodies need to come down. And when you're constantly eating, that's the biggest reaction to autoantibodies because our body's trying to sort out our foods. So controlling what goes in your mouth and what time you eat and when you eat and how many calories you eat is very important for the immune system. Your body never gets a break. So. If you could do three fasting, if it could be day one, day three, day five, very simple, under 500 calories for females and under 600 for, for males. Doing this, eight to, when they did studies on this after eight to 12 weeks, uh, their insulin dropped, human growth hormone went up from 50 to 200%. That, that's good, good for your joints, good for, your, good for everything. Every, everybody wants hormone, growth hormone, especially baseball players. <laughs> cellular repair, gene uh, expression, there's uh, big detoxification, uh, weight loss, lower blood pressure, uh, change some markers, inflammatory markers, and then uh, brain-derived neurotrophic pro, uh, protein was the big one for regeneration up in the brain, MS, the vascular up in the brain. So here's some other things. You can look at the uh, slides, but uh, basically, it, it, intermittent fasting reduces the ri risk for degenerative diseases connected to inflammatory response in the central nervous system. Um, suppresses inflammation, maintains cognitive function. So these are, these are you know, it's, it's basically anti-inflammatory. And it's only three days a week. I mean, it's not hard. If, you're, if you work, that's not hard because most of your, your, your job, you know, we snack in between our jobs anyway. Or, or, uh, or at lunchtime. 50% of everybody that has autoimmune diseases has low hydrochloric acid. 
if your assembly, if your stomach's not working and you're not, it's your septic system. If your septic system is interrupted at all, you're not getting, you're going to actually pass undigested proteins and foods and all kinds of stuff. And then your pancreas ain't going to be able to produce the right amount of enzymes to be released into the small intestine. And then your bile is not going to produce the amount of bile, you know, from the bile duct into the small intestine. And then eventually what we're going to have is SIBO, small intestine bacterial overgrowth. So a lot of us don't realize we have small intestine bacterial overgrowth because it's gut permeability. It's the gut. It's, it's, no, it's not. It's the stomach and the processing center that starts the stomach that you're not sterilizing your foods. So you can keep taking your probiotic. You can do whatever you want with your probiotic. People are like, well, I take my probiotic. Well, that's down here. It's not up here. That's not going to change up here if it's coming from... You know, if it's down here, you got to start up here and work your way down. It just doesn't make sense to me. So everybody's just, you know, following the media. But uh, very important, uh, stomach acid is probably what's the most important. I, I looked at the, I looked at all the research, and I'm like, if if people that have autoimmune disease don't start here, they're like missing the boat. I couldn't believe. Autoimmune, adrenals, adult acne, allergic to foods, pernicious anemia, uh, broken capillaries. That's because your body is filling, you're like a cesspool. You're filling up because you're not sterilizing anything. Eczema, psoriasis, emaciation. You know, you're not going to get enough protein. So low stomach acid always has to do with about 50% of autoimmune. Here's more of them. You just keep putting them up there. So, <clears throat> this is the one I use, support HCL balance, restores digestive function. Uh, it's called hydrozyme. Remember your pH is 1.5 to 2.5 in that gastric pH. Now, what does an allergy have to do with hydrochloric acid? If it's a protein, probably because you don't, if you don't have enough, you can't break down the protein. But there's one key point. When you have an allergy to something and you know you have an intolerance to it and it bothers you, the actual food itself and the chemical makeup will paralyze your parietal cells. The flu, bacterias, infection, paralyze the parietal cells, and the parietal cells in the stomach are responsible for releasing hydrochloric acid. So if you can understand that concept, then you'll understand this. 85% HCL deficient, 50% of the autoimmune are, are deficient. Infection in the stomach is the biggest cause that's leading to the rest of the body. And the reason I know this is, if you look at this, um, GBO is gastric bacterial overgrowth. Uh, SIBO is a small intestine bacterial overgrowth. I never give hydrozyme because you'd just be, you'd be like giving a pain pill to somebody that knows what their problem is, but they just keep on taking the pain pill and not fixing the problem. It's the same thing with hydrochloric acid. You can keep on giving hydrochloric acid, but I always lead with this to make sure there's nothing going on as far as the small intestine uh, gastritis and small intestine uh, bacterial overgrowth. Then you could put the hydrochloric acid back in. But I always use this. This is, the BioHPF stands for H. pylori factor. It's a bacteria. And the reason I put these two slides up here is because there's a lot of reasons. These are called petechiae. And if you look on your body, you see these little ruptures around your body. There's, there's a bunch of reasons for the, uh, the, the body to produce petechiae. 
But when you have H. pylori, or you have salmonella, or you have bacteria, or you have E. coli, if that overgrowth is happening in the stomach and the small intestine, and it's not going to show up, you're going to have low-grade symptoms, you start showing up with this stuff. What happens is your body, that bacteria overgrowth creates your body and sucks the oxygen out of your blood. And when you suck the oxygen out of your blood, platelets line all your capillaries. And when those platelets line all your capillaries, platelets turn into red blood cells. So as you're sucking up that oxygen, what carries oxygen? Red blood cells. So what happens is your body can't make enough platelets to catch up with the red blood cells. And what happens is it starts pulling them off the lining of the arteries and causing petechiae. That's how you get a rupture. And there's called thr uh, uh, thrombopoietin is responsible for this, uh, for actually making platelets. But if, you make, if you're, you're using them up too much and thrombopoietin can't be released from the liver and sent to the bone to say make more platelets, you can't catch up and you end up rupturing. This also happens in drug reactions, antibiotics, different drug reactions for autoimmune. That's why I put it up there. And then I put this one. This, these are dots up in here too. You can get them anywhere in your whole body. I always look at people. 50% of all these dots besides drug is related to gastric and small intestine bacterial overgrowth. That's a lot. That's an answer you're not going to get out there. You can look at the blood work, and I won't go over that, but you can look at the total globulin, mean corpuscular hemoglobin. Um, you can look at all the different blood work, and you can, you can kind of tell where people, if they're low in hydrochloric acid. This, real quick, has to do with autoimmune diseases. Everybody's heard of methylation? There's low methylation, over methylation, but this is mainly low methylation. Methylation is basically your, your ability of your liver to detoxify chemicals out of your body. That's why African Americans shouldn't get vaccines. There, there's, they have more defects in their methylation product, in their, in their, in their bodies. Mm -hmm. If you can't methylate, that, that one vaccine ends up to be five to 10. So you have to be careful uh, a lot of kids are having methylation problems, and that's a reason not to vaccinate. So if you are, it doesn't cost a lot, but you could check your kid, because if you can't methylate, you're going to have autoimmune diseases. It's that simple. These are your 90% that are acquired from your environment. And why isn't methylation talked about? This should be a commercial on television. If your methylation is bad, you're not going to detoxify well. Doesn't that sound like a good infomercial? <laughs> well, my point is, is because they don't talk about nutrition and they don't talk about nutrition and supplements. This is a supplement deficiency. You're not going to get as much as you did 50 years ago out of your food as you do now. It's a, it's a, it's a fact. So methylation is a nutritional deficiency of missing or need more of it to fix the genetic problem. B3, B2, zinc, selenium, magnesium, copper. You need all of that. And if there's a defect in any one of those, there's usually three or four of them, but if there's a defect anywhere, you have a detoxification problem. You have a methylation problem. Uh, okay, let's get, uh, got about another 10 or 15 minutes and I want to roll through and show you. There's different types, uh, there's two systems in your immune system that they break down and they break down how the T cells work. These are, these are uh, thymus cells that actually run your immune system and react. They react, they're your guards, those are your bodyguards. Th1 uh, system is basically uh, overactive immune system on the Th1 side. Um, all these diseases are on that side. It's kind of cool because 
Parasites are always a good place to start with people that have Th1, any type of diabetes, Crohn's, you know, multiple sclerosis. You never hurt anybody, you know. You do it to your dog twice a year, you know, you could do it to yourself once a year. And then Th2 is more on your allergy, asthma, uh, fungal infections, colitis, all that stuff. So there are certain chemicals that are overreacted in this, and then there are certain chemicals that are overreacted in this, and that's what leads to these infections, and that's what I'm getting to. Here's your Th1, here's your multiple sclerosis. These are all the chemicals that are involved that work. It's very complicated, but I wanted you, I want to get it on the, the slideshow. Now, there's two of them I want to talk about. This one is very important. This one's called TNF or tumor necrosing factor alpha. This chemical right here, overreacting in your body for whatever reason, creates all these situations. Osteoporosis, non-alcoholic fatty liver, metabolic disease, asthma, psoriasis, sarcoidosis, all. Just this one right here. That's huge. Okay? So we want to find something that's a TNF inhibitor. We want to find something that, that this chemical cannot be overexpressed. We want to put it back into balance. These are all the diseases, uh, basically saying the same thing. There's another one, it's called interleukin-1. So we have those two pathways, so tumor necrosing factor and interleukin-1 are your most important cytokines at this time, according to the research, that you want to involve yourself if you have any type or existence of autoimmune disease. These are the ones that cause the most inflammation. And these are the, prob the problems that are expressed as autoimmune diseases. You have, uh, although some autoinflammatory diseases are due to gain of function mutations, there's just some genetic, whether it's genetic or not, certain heavy metals, infections, allergies, uh, um, you know, stress, um, all those things can affect interleukin-1 and tumor necrosing factor. And they can thrive off your body being in the stomach and the gut. So you're starting to see the relationship of allergy, paralyzed parietal cells, not enough hydrochloric acid, bacterial overgrowth, low platelets, you start looking, you start adding these things up, and, you, and now you got a nice clinical picture of what, you know, what we're doing. These are all the interleukin-1. If you look at all these, some of these I don't even know. Idiopathic pericarditis, inflammation around the heart. Um, here's some, you know, these are, these are your genetic ones, okay? Rheumatoid arthritis. Periodic fevers, gout, I didn't know gout. Gout's a big uh, interleukin one. I'm a gouty guy, so I gotta, so that helps me understand that, because I have, I have gout. High triglycerides, usually 75% of you have gout. So you can't have the hamburgers, hot dogs, all that stuff. Or your joints start bothering, you just feel stiff the next day. Um, multiple myeloma, osteoarthritis. This is what I use because this, there's four ingredients in it. This main one, Romania complex, blocks interleukin-1 and tumor necrosing factor. All those autoimmune, but those specific two pathways, Romania complex. So I'm using that on people coming into the office. I'm using it because the science says it, but I'm also using it because a lot of times you have to put the fire out before you could start rebuilding and reestablishing things, okay? So this is kind of the one I use to put the fire out. And then let's look at heavy metals, infections, allergies, but this is the main go-to to at least get some type of relief and get that cascade of those Th1, Th2, and that TNF and, and that Ig uh, interleukin-1 all balanced. That's how you do it. 
and this is the one that does it. It's called Romania complex. It's basically an adrenal. It's trophal restorative. You know what the word trophal restorative means? Regeneration. When we see the stem cell stuff and we're going to regenerate stuff, our body's been doing it since the beginning of time. We're just like, you know, we're like, wow, that's cool. They grew an ear in a Petri dish. They always could grow an ear in a Petri dish. They just never knew how to do it. Romania complex helps with fevers, uh, but it's very good. It, it regenerates the adrenal glands. Um, autoimmune conditions caused by derangement in the immune system. Um, it reduces symptoms. He does not represent it as a cure for autoimmune diseases, but you've got to look at those other things. But it's very highly likely to help you without sledgehammer medications. Kind of like the, you know, the artesmian beating out the sledgehammer drugs because you're working with a synergism. Romania, um, let's see, this herb possesses both immune enhancing as well as immune suppressant. So if it's low, it raises it. If it's high, it brings it down. So it has an immune modulating effect in the immune system. And that's what you want. You don't want a sledgehammer where now you're taking something that's high and you're just shooting it low and, and your body's going back and forth. That's not the way the system works and that's called side effects. So you want something that's going to modulate and retain and bring you back to normal. Basically, it reduces histamines, um, TNF, all that stuff. So that I talked about. Let's keep going. Now, this is interesting. TNF, alpha, at too high of levels causes osteoporosis. Also, TNF alpha causes diabetes. Why is that important? Because TNF, when it gets high, it eats your joints and it decalcifies you. So, and what does your doctor do? Oh, you got osteoporosis. What does he do? Well, we're, we're going to give you some synthetic estrogen. We're going we're gonna to try to raise your calcium level through estrogen. Well, it's not estrogen that's causing the problem. It's this inflammatory marker that's causing the problem. Estrogen could be a part of it, but it's not the key part of it. If you look at this, Romania actually raised the bone density without even messing with estrogen. It actually brought it right back up. You didn't even need any estrogen. But it was the TNF alpha too high that created the reabsorption of the joint or the bone that created the osteoporosis. So this, so back to the TNF alpha, back to the Romania, back to the uh, blocking that. So that's how it works. And this is the research to back it up. Uh, Romanian complex, Chinese fox gold. So when they use this oral administration of an herbal preparation containing Romanian astragalus, the, this was in chronic nephritis. Anybody know what that is? Your kidneys are failing. How many dialysis clinic, dialysis clinic, or dialysis clinic, why is that not coming out? Dialysis clinics in, in Michigan. It's huge because everybody's on drugs. But chronic nephritis, when they took those two things, 91%, 91 91%. That's like bad for business. <laughs> Further animal studies verified the therapeutic effects because it was working on uh, the IL-1 actually is very, gets disturbed in the kidneys and the lining of the kidneys is called glomerular nephritis. The Romania works beautiful for it. It's almost like the cure. Here's the uh, immune enhancement. Results show that RGP, which is the Romania, significantly stimulated lymphocytes, the growth rate of T cells, it regenerated. Reset your whole system. 
Romania inhibits tumor necrosing factor and alpha interleukin-1. Now, you never see the word cure in the research. When you see the word cure, you better do it. <laughs> there ain't going to be any other studies. These results of Romania, but this is in a mouse. Well, all your other drugs are, are tested in mice too. <laughs> okay. These results suggest that Romania inhibits TNF-alpha by inhibiting interleukin-1 and that has an anti-inflammatory activity in the central nervous system. What's the word right there? Curing. We're all going to jail. We said the word cure and we have a product. <laughs> so, now that was cool. That was done in 1999. That was out of Korea. I found that out of Korea. I don't know if it's North Korea or South Korea. I don't, I don't care. So, but that's some neat stuff. Um, anytime you have autoimmune, you always want to ask, are my feet cold or are my feet hot? Are my hands cold or are my hands hot? Whenever your feet are hot or your, or your hands are cold, hands cold, they call it Raynaud's. It's just autoimmune. It's, micro, it's the microcirculation. Uh, it's, it, it's easy to fix that. But always indicates, you can always see if you have flushing in your hands, fatty liver, you could tell they're always hot. You got fatty liver. Um, autoimmune uh, could be cold, but liver over functioning, hot, liver under functioning, cold. Okay? Um, so that's, those are the two things I use on that. Infection. We don't really talk about infection. We don't talk about these ones especially because these are sexually transmitted diseases. But these are, these are major problems. And they're, and they're transferred through the gene pool. But if you look at uh, human uh, herpes virus, there's six. Hermi herpes human virus number four is Epstein-Barr virus, or kissing disease. Remember that one, high school? No? <laughs> well, Epstein-Barr virus can cause allergies because it causes the B cells which produce antibodies to your foods to overproduce them. So it hijacks the B cells. That's why it can cause uh, non-Hodgkin's lymphoma. But it hijacks the B cells. Most people that have allergies, a lot of them have this, Epstein-Barr virus. And it's working below the system and you don't know anything about it. And it's just churning constantly. And your body's trying to maintain it. But eventually, allergies, autoimmune, but that's just one example. But um, Epstein-Barr virus is probably one of the most biggest causes of, of allergies. It's not, your, um, you know, it's the virus changing your immune system, not you reacting to that protein in the food. And that's what happens. And that's important. Um, all these other ones, cytomegalovirus, um, those are all big ones, but when you test these specific viruses, in the body when they have an autoimmune, people usually have two or three infections going on. It's called chronic fatigue syndrome. Their body's exhausted. That's because the immune system is driving their adrenals into the ground. Their adrenals can't keep up. And you surely aren't going to eat, right? Like most of us do. <laughs> no, we do. So. I just wanted to clarify that because that's a big one that I, that I found that most people don't know about. Optimal medium pH for growth. Um, if you look at all these staph strep, pneumococcus, uh, diphtheria, tetani, human influenza, brucellus, meningococcus, all these, that's the pH. Above seven's neutral, above seven's alkaline, right? So if all these are in that pH range, what do you think is going to happen in your stomach? What's your stomach? 
1.5 to 2.3. Those things can't hang out in your stomach. But if your stomach is affected, oh, but I like to drink alkaline water. I mean, are you serious about alkaline water? Real water should be seven, pH neutral. So that if you have too much acid, you can absorb the acidity. And then if you're too alkaline, neutral water will carry away alkalinity. So real water should be seven, not above seven, because that makes a great median for growth in the body. Um, these are basically cytomegalovirus, Epstein-Barr virus, um, your two herpes, your staph, your strep, all these infection stuff. These are, you know, this is my stealth pathogen, clear chronic to low level infection program in the body. This is to get rid of this stuff. If you can get rid of, if you can get rid of malaria with an herb, you can get rid of a lot of other stuff with herbs. Just put it that way. That's why I led with that example. Uh, these are all disease. This is that Romani is actually a cure for the uh, Baquet's disease. And that's that the, the mechanism that I showed you is the exact same on how it cures it. Rheumatoid arthritis. Here's your gout. Um, right here, Romania increased cortical bone thickness and trabeculation of the bone marrow spaces. That's a that's a that's a pretty good. Uh, it's a pretty good medicine. Your, you, your drug would never even match against this. It can't. Because it's not, it, it might catch up a little bit, but eventually it'll fall back behind again. Because you're not taking care of the mechanism. Um, some people, this is basically a fancy way of saying there's your interleukin 1, there's your inflammatories, these are all just research stuff. There's your IgE, allergies. People that get allergies, IgE is high in people that get allergies and have worms, okay? And some genetic uh, disparities, but the point being is that it regulated uh, your IgEs or your eosinophils. This is the two products I use. Um, one's the Romania. This is kind of the, the stronger one. It's actually a liquid and it's pure Romania. So you probably do, you know, a half teaspoon twice a day um, if you had any type of autoimmune. So, I mean, I don't recommend these because I don't know what you have, but I'm just telling you that that's what I'd use. And then Romania Complex is the main one that I use uh, uh, with these different accessories, Blephrum, Falcatum, which is basically uh, helps with fatty liver. It dissolves fatty liver. Um, Technum parthenum helps with uh, headaches, and then the other one. But um, but all those four things are focusing on those two inflammatory pathways: tumor necrosing factor alpha and interleukin one. And it was all those diseases were based on just two simple cascade pathways that that could easily manage and maintain where you, where you went after what was the real cause. But it put, put the immune system back into regulation uh, um, due to dysregulation. Okay, anybody have any questions? Let's do the uh, drawing. <laughs> Petechiae, yeah. Which one? Those were angiomas, cherry angioma. Not me. No, no, no. Yeah, no. Tessa one time called them sheep angiomas from estrogen. You know, look very, very much like that. Uh, anything that can disrupt the liver uh, can cause lack of that thrombopoietin that actually activates the platelets in the in the bone marrow. So any so a fatty liver can create those also but most of them are created through autoimmune because the liver can't regulate it. So estrogen can cause it also, but I mean, we don't, 
you know, it's usually not the prime reason. But H. pylori, and anybody that has these, anytime I see those on people, I always, you always look to the stomach and you always look for H. pylori uh, infection or some type of overgrowth in the stomach or the small intestine. And then you support that. We're not treating infection, we're supporting the immune system so that we can work with the immune system and not replace it because antibiotics are the main cause of irritable bowel syndrome. And that's turning into autoimmune disease in itself because once you shut the, you know, the, the small intestine or the large intestine, I mean, that's, that's permeability to your whole system. I mean, that, that's what runs your whole system. That's 80% of your, your immune system. So irritable bowel is, is I, I think, a pre-indicator from use of antibiotics of autoimmune. So what do we got? Three. Two. No, four. Four. Okay. There we go. Four. Four. Carol Duncan. I'm going to give her my Charlie soap. Uh, I would just turn with Charlie soap. Were you? Good. Perfect. You're welcome. And then uh, we have Aaron Hasek. He's going to get the Acera. We're going to give him the Acera. And then the Zach Polzin. He's getting the Azera. You guys. And then Paul Sematowski. He's getting the uh, longevity. Yeah. Here you go, Paul. What is it? Oh, it's a peppermint. Great. Thanks. No. Nope. You two are getting the Azera. Does anybody have any questions? Do you yeah. have any handout things? Could you just give us like a ton of information? Anything you need? Well, I, that's why the video people are here. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to PDF all these. And then I'm going to put them on the web page. And you just go and look through them and read them as, as you wish. Instead of handing out, you know, like a, like a, a college course or something. Can you sign up? Can that pinpoint intolerances at level 11? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I like using the blood test better. You know, Sarah does great for certain things, but I like using the blood test, the 96 panel, to test that. I think it's more true because you're t actually testing the blood and you're testing the, the food antigens against the blood, and, and, that, and that's important. Electrically, you can do that too, but I think it's just a little bit more specific. That, do those tests change a lot after you, you know, hyperacidify maybe or clean out your liver and stuff? Is there a big fluctuation? For what? The allergy? Yeah. yeah, I'm not I'm not looking at it as a result. I'm looking as where to start. I understand, but can, like, so if, you, you know, like the garlic showed up, all the sulfur during amenos, like what if you played that really hard, would that change on that 96? Uh, I, I, I believe it will, but I believe that the, the sulfation pathway, you, you're going to have a susceptibility to that anyway. So you, you, you just want to find your one or two weaknesses and then focus on those. So if you can just find uh, one or two weaknesses, whatever detoxification pathway it is, maybe it's sulfation, maybe it's acetaldehyde, maybe it's, you know, uh, um, um, uh, estrogen metabolism, testosterone, all your hormonal pathways. So you just got to find your weakness. I mean, the body's pretty complex. But the Acera, the blood test, the hair analysis, the allergy testing, all that can really give you a good clinical picture uh, to help. And then you apply the research to why it's happening, and then you kind of go after it and balance the immune system. Okay, any other questions? How long can you stay on the Romania products? How long? I usually do, it, you could do eight to 12 weeks and then you take off a month, eight to 12 weeks, eight, a month. I'm always giving your body a break. Okay, but you can stay on it? Oh yeah, okay. yep. And you can keep taking it like that though? Mm -hmm. Yep, <clears throat> it's like picking the right herb out of nature, you know? You like it? A huge difference when did I put you on that? About two and a half weeks ago. Good. Yeah. 
Good. That was a good. Uh, you're taking two or you're taking four? Uh, four. Four? Yeah. You can take. You can. I'm taking two. For some kind of autoimmune, start taking it? Um, right now, kind of trying to figure out, but yeah, I, I think. Just I'm randomly? Not. Yeah. Okay, any other questions? Yeah, so I'll put those PDFs on my uh, web page and then the video and, you know, you could always, and, and, and then you got my uh, web page information. You can email me, whatever you want to do. Sound good? Thanks for coming. Yeah.